Welcome back to the lab. Welcome back to EE for everyone. I just spent a little bit of time putting together a little test platform that I think will be useful. Uh, sorry, getting ahead of myself. We're in the motor project. We are continuing the motor project today. We're in the lab. This is where we landed. Uh, not bad for a couple minutes in the shop. Just don't look at the bottom. Oh my goodness. Yeah, this thing is a, a little ugly on the bottom, but uh, what we have is a place to plug in a motor so we can swap in both motors should we choose. Just need to populate the one you want. Uh, basically just unplug the motor and there you go. We can also flip that to reverse direction. But we have the motor that sensor plugged into the board just raises everything up nicely. But then on the bottom, I've put in a, an NPN transistor, which is why I have the two gate drive resistors, so I can double the gate current. Sorry, double the base current. It's an NPN transistor, so it's current controlled. I put on a transistor and a diode. The diode um, is a freewheeling diode or a diode that prevents transient over voltages because we're going to be PWM controlling this motor. So to use this, it's quite simple. Right now I'm going to do it with a single power source. We plug power, ground, second power. There's motor power and power for the sensor. And this becomes our sense. This is what will connect to the oscilloscope and allow for measurement. Now, all one needs to do to start this spinning is connect the base of the NPN transistor to the power. But what if we want to run a little slower? Now, this is cool. Our frequency is 16 hertz. If I pull the Due cycle down, we're down at 40% duty cycle. You can probably see how slow it is spinning. This is 15 hertz on a six window wheel. And now we stopped at lower. But as I increase the duty percent, it's clear to see the motor is spinning faster we're now up to uh, 100 hertz. So that means there's this range from about 30 hertz to 50 hertz where we can verify whether or not we are regulating speed in the future. So this will allow us to get a control loop running on a microcontroller, regulate speed. This should be pretty cool. So we're upstairs. I've been writing a little bit of code, and I just let this test run overnight. Um, yeah, so basically I uh, ran into a common issue, which is numbers, at least in a microcontroller, the numbers are finite. So if we want to track position with a reasonable amount of precision, so tenths of degrees, that number gets very, very large. So I've just let this thing spin for, I don't know, 10 hours or so. And I'm counting rollovers as, I mean, I sh probably should have just used a 64-bit variable, but I don't really want to use a 64-bit variable because we only have 16-bit registers in Modbus. I'm basically doing overflow protection. And so we are counting a couple things. Basically, every sample time, which is modifiable, in this case, it's 250 milliseconds, I grab the number of pulses that have occurred in that interval. Then of course I know the interval because it's programmed there in milliseconds. So I convert that into tenths of degrees, knowing the number of pulses per revolution of the encoder and how many tenths of degrees are in one rotation. We use that conversion factor and add on absolute distance. And if that gets higher than clip protection, which I set as, I believe, 2 billion. We subtract 2 billion from it, and then we increment rollover count. So we have a one register that counts 
tenths of degrees. And then we have a register that counts two billion tenths of degrees. You should never see anything above two billion reported for distance traveled. That just gives a little bit of margin on the rollover. It's like two billion, 147,000, et cetera, et cetera. Losing a little bit of our, our maximum value, but I really think this is okay. Something that I'm already sad about, which thankfully will be fixed in the next version of this hardware, is that we only count up. Like we don't have two offset wheels, so I can't use this like an optical encoder that gives us direction and position, which at first I thought was fine, but it's not fine because in real systems, you can back drive a motor and we need to be able to count how far it was back driven. And so if you're not moving the motor and you get pulses, you have no idea what to do. You don't know whether you should add or subtract. Um, so yeah, that I have something in the mail, hasn't been delivered yet. So hopefully next video, it'll, it'll get here and it'll give us an actual encoder that'll give us the, uh, I think ABZ signals, the three sets of switches. So it'll be pretty exciting. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss that. But for today, here's what I wanted to show you. This speed on top, that 33, is the set point. And I have a very simple, uh, I guess it's an eye controller, but it's not designed like an eye controller. I just add one to the PWM set point every 250 milliseconds that we're going too slow, and I subtract one for every 250 milliseconds that we are too fast. Okay, I'm going to add a load. You can see I'm slowing it down. I've stopped it. The speed has dropped to zero and the PWM set point is up at 255. If I let go, we are getting 38, I believe it's pulses per second or revolutions per second. Um, and you see that it brings it right back down to 33. Should be very close to that same PWM set point. So this is really cool. I am actually a big fan of this setup. It's certainly not perfect, but it should let me get a better controller in here and we can give it some step responses and see how that goes. We have the uh, controller set up. I have it set up with a I term of 0.75 and a P term of one. I don't have this logging. I probably should have this logging. I'll give you some step responses and pretty graphs in a second. Um, but basically I have this wheel set up as it has been. And this is running our control loop. And I have it set up so that it'll do a step response when I hit enter. Right now it's regulating to something. I believe it's five revs per second. I hit enter and hopefully you can tell that started spinning faster. I believe it was 15, 14 revs per second is the set point. Hit it again, goes back down to five. Now this is really cool where if I hold down the wheel, you can see it snaps the set point up pretty fast. Let go, brings it right back down. It's pretty cool. Uh, I had to slow it down a bit. It was a little unstable, but this is also a really short time constant system. Like there's no load on the motor. So yeah, I mean, that's something that we're going to need to tackle. Like just the control loop side of this is really tricky. A uh, motor with no load is going to have a very different uh, response or transfer function than like a motor in a mechatronic system. So we're probably going to need to tackle like auto tuning routines and stuff like that, which is going to be pretty fun. That'll be an interesting control challenge designing the motor driver so that it can tune itself. We have achieved mediocrity. <laughs> Just kidding. So we have the most basic control loop running to regulate position. Basically says, if you have not gone far enough, go further. And this switches between five revolutions per second and two revolutions per second, adding four revolutions to the set point every time we hit enter. So if I hit enter, it should move. And what we see is we asked it to go uh, 1,440 degrees and it went 15, uh, 1,584. If we tell it to move again, 
it also moved. It's difficult for this motor to move at such slow speeds. It's really just not made for it, which is a part of why the motion is so choppy. But our control loop is doing what it can, right? Realistically, for how short our control time is, I should probably be regulating tenths of revolutions rather than revolutions. That's a part of the problem. Um, because at this low of a speed, we're only getting one or two pulses. So the error in speed, um, I mean, it's huge. <laughs> one of the things that is obviously really cool about control loops is that it is a control loop. I'm going to just add a little bit of resistance hit enter it's fighting oh goodness <laughs> that overshot just a touch that is cool we are now plotting the target distance and the achieved distance in the arduino ie as two different variables so when i hit enter you see the blue line our set point changed and the actual distance traveled was a little more if i do it again very cool if i do it again very cool now of course i can tick 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 <laughs> just run a couple of these and you can see that distance traveled counting up. And this is where the directionality is an issue, right? I'm spinning it the wrong way, but it counts up anyways. It doesn't care, it does not care which way I spin it. The serial monitor just keeps going up. So yeah, I mean, that's the principle, right? I'm doing speed regulation, position regulation. I'll admit none of it's really that good. We have a lot to do to make this project good, but all I have to do is unbox that encoder, figure out a way to interpret the two pulse train rather than the single pulse train to get speed and direction information, and then we'll have true proper closed loop because I can spin it and it will spin it back. And that'll be so good. I can't wait for that, but we have to leave something for our next video. So I'm gonna park this here. Not bad for just a couple days in the lab. And of course, yeah, we have to get the mod bus hooked up. Oh my goodness, we have a lot to do. But I wanna give a special thank you to our channel members on Patreon and YouTube. You guys really make projects like this one possible and, and it really means a lot to me. So uh, thank you, really, thank you. Um, yeah, I, I think this is just so much fun and, and I can't wait to continue to make this project work better and better. Like this is gonna be so cool once we get mod bus and everything else hooked up and yeah, it's great. But most of all, I hope you learned something great today, and I hope to see you again soon. Thanks for watching E for Everyone, and thank you for staying till the end. Bye!